We're going to start with the punch this morning. Crude oil price, MAN, warns that's Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, warns of hyperinflation. Subsidy hits 400 naira. Diesel, 625 naira per litre. International Women's Day, close gender gap between men and women in governance, says Minister. Power disruption looms as Second Niger Bridge gets April completion date. Scores injured, shops burnt as Yoruba Hausa traders clash in Ogun. Bamishe, Sonwolu slams critics, BRT suspends operations, family demands justice. Oshun PDP governor's primaries produce Adeleke Abayemi as candidates. Tinumbu proposes meeting with APC reps caucus on presidential bid. Electoral Act Court Can't Stop Amendment, says Lawan. PDP submits Umar his replacement to INEC, sacked governor's seat chat. Okay. Which story? Let's start with the so human the interest. Human interest. Okay, so um, we all are aware of the sad story of the young girl, young fashion designer that um, was murdered allegedly by the BRT bus driver. Um, her sister was on a live yesterday and she spoke about how, you know, they heard the news. And um, she, was, she appealed to the state governor, to um, the president as well, to make sure that all is done to investigate the story because the driver is giving a different side to the story. He claims that there were gunmen who were in the bus and forced, um, and they were the ones that forced her or killed her. But she says definitely there are holes in his story because when it happened, he went, he went home and two days later he resumed work. He did not report the case. Mm -hmm. He did not say anything happened to him. He just continued work. And so she's begging that please investigations to be done properly to make sure that her, daughter, um, her sister gets um, justice. Really sad. So, as a, I mean, this is an important, important story because we ride on a lot of emotions. And it's important that we allow the law to take its course. We also mm. allow investigations to be done properly. properly. So we know, I know people are angry, people are upset. There's always media trials. And there's always a media trial where people just come with all sorts of things. But... First and foremost, let's wait for the autopsy, autopsy. results. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happened. That then directs us, and then the investigation. Mm -hmm. And let's hope that indeed we have real justice because and the governor obviously is aware of that and is on yeah. top of it. So yes. let us stay calm. And I think something I will never forget what um, SDJ said, Stella Jean Jacob said, we must learn to um, exercise restraint mm -hmm. and tolerance. Restraint mm -hmm. is so important. We want to shout, mm -hmm. scream, wait. yes, restrain calm yourself. Down. Let the law take its course. Even though we're going to live in a banana republic. Yes. yes. Everybody would do right, things okay. anyhow. Yes. So I'll take the story about International Women's Day. The Minister for Women Affairs, Pauline Talon, has urged all stakeholders. Um, she was speaking at the Christian Association of Nigeria um, event that they used to commemorate the date ye yesterday in Abuja. And she um, spoke to the fact that we need to close the gender gap. We need mm. to... We, it, she said um, she, she's of the opinion that a lot of development would happen if we would just give more women opportunity in positions of leadership. Of course, the media, the president also spoke at the same event. Um, um, Governor of Edo State, Obaseki, spoke at this event. Everybody's just saying that. We're well, reiterating it in words. I just want this action, you know. So if everybody's saying it now, when it's time to vote, let's give the women what they've demanded for. Mm. And vote for the men who are, vote for the he for she's, those yes. who, the men who have supported us. Yeah. Let us vote for them because, hey, listen, that's where we are. We see the speaker, yes. we see you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Yes, so, we um, another story, uh, human interest story here. So I think a Monday evening, uh, Yoruba traders and Hausa settlers engaged in a bloody clash mm. at the popular Lafenwa market in Abiyokuta, the state capital. They said the uh, fight started on Monday, snowballed heavily on Tuesday, when they found out that one of the Hausa settlers had died. So they ha there was a clash between them. And when one Hausa man died, the thing just escalated. Hmm. And so they brought in the Seriki, uh, house, um, of the head of the Hausa settlers, was called to intervene in the crisis. And he was injured as well. So he's been taken to the hospital. Hmm. Although the police, uh, public, uh, um, police public relations officer, Abimbola Yeyemi, has confirmed the incident. But he's saying that the there is no life lost, although a lot of shots were raised down in the clash. They didn't give us the exact details of what happened between the house and the Yoruba people. Okay, let's move on. I was going to take a story, which I can't even remember the story, too, but let's move on quickly to the nation. Um, APC's soft landing for Buni as Sunny Bello consolidates. NYSC DG cautions core members on free rights. Buhari to open Second Niger Bridge in October. Judgment sacking Umahi throws Eboi into confusion. 
uh, Catholic priests abducted. International Women's Day, and Adele K. Baba Yemi claim or should be governorship ticket. Hey. Yes, the DG of NYSC is appealing to coppers to please not take free rides. Don't jump on those free rides. In light of all that's happened, the constant kidnappings, ritual killings, um, sadly, um, uh, the one that we're just talking about, even though this wasn't yeah, a free ride, this was a government <laughs> ride, but to just say that, you know, and we were there once before. We understand what it means to be a cop. And sometimes you are trying to count your change mm, and, you know, manage your, money. and manage your money. But times are tough. You cannot trust anyone. So just be careful not to take free rides. Just take government-approved transportation. Okay, so I was going to take the Electoral Act. So what happened was that the Federal High Court in Abuja had stopped the President, the Attorney General, and I think the Minister of Justice, and even the Parliament from tampering with the Electoral Act of 2022. But however, the... Um, 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 I think the, the president of the, um, the Senate was saying that we cannot let the judiciary stop us from doing our jobs. You know, that, um, uh, let me see, he wanted to make his, he said, I find it necessary to talk about this at this point because our governance system is based on presidential system of government where there's clear cut, um, clear cut separation of powers. The judiciary under no circumstance cannot stop the National Assembly from performing its legislative duties. I mean, so this is they just back and forth between. Too low. Um, mm. So, if yeah. you tamper with it, it would affect the elections. Mm -hmm. That's, That's what, yeah. So we, we need to <laughs> disagree. Okay. So we have uh, the story of the Federal High Court in Abuja yesterday concerning David Omahi, mm -hmm. the state governor, who was sacked because he defected uh, alongside his deputy to another political party. So according <laughs> to Justice Iyang Eko, he said they unlawfully defected from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressive Congress, APC. And... They won that election based on the PDP platform, right. mm -hmm. which it's not an individual who won the election. So they cannot transfer uh, the position that they've gotten from one political party to uh, another. Well, I think we're going to be talking about it. So let me yeah. not just give the full details. But mm -hmm. Mahi, on the other hand, is saying that he is covered by immunity, so the judge does not have any <laughs> rights to remove him from his position. Lawyers will tell okay. us, what do we know? So uh, let's move on quickly. Let's see how much time we have. We have some more time. Um, the nation. Okay, so let's move on to Oh, the let me quickly take a story in the nation. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there was a sad story of bandits. Two people were killed. Um, very sad story. So this happened. The father, Joseph Akeke, was kidnapped, as well as two children and their mother. Mm. The kidnapping took place... Um, in Kaduna Metropolis, and the police confirmed it. They said they were sh um, shooting into the air, killed the local security men that were supposed to protect the church and the, parish the, the parishioners. Those were killed. They kidnapped the Reverend Father and two other, three other people alongside. The story has been confirmed. Of course, you know, Khan has spoken up concerning this to say it happened. We are very, very angry mm -hmm. about it. Security officials are, showing, are now at the scene, allowing citizens to go about their activities. And I'm really, really, this is, yeah. like, we're tired. Sad, every day. We're tired, you know. Okay, let's move on to Zadie's son. Um, Umahi talks stuff over and after the court sack. Let's find a story. We're going to take a second night at the bridge. Mm. Ready next month, this federal government. Mm. Uh, Oshuk PDP primaries, Adeleke mm. Babayemi, a match factional candidate. Family of murdered BRT passenger picks holes in driver's accounts. Mm. Uh, let's see, can, uh, airline cancel more flights as aviation fuel scarcity worsens and Senate tackles judiciary begins electoral act amendment. Okay, well, second Niger Bridge. Second Niger Bridge. So the federal government has said it will complete the second Niger Bridge next month mm. and it will be commissioned before the end of the year. So according to the chief of staff to the president, Muhammad Buhari, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, he said um, this when they were mounting the toll. And he was saying that uh, the concession and uh, the tolling is a secondary issue. They want to first of all sort out the completion of uh, the roads before they can talk about tolling. And if we really want to go by international best practices over the world, you see that we need to pay for the services that we get. So definitely we're going to be having toll there, but they will be creating <laughs> an alternative. So for those who do not want to go through the toll and pay, they will go the through the old, old, yeah, the old road, mm -hmm. the alternative road. And that's how it's done all over the world if you want those uh, critical services. But people are really happy that this happy. Niger Bridge As finally. As if we've been waiting. It's like, it's like that this is yes, yes, So flights are being canceled. Because obviously the scarcity of fuel. 
um, Ghana Air, Ebom Air, quite a number of them had passengers delayed their flights. Many of them, they couldn't get the Jet A once, um, uh, which is the fuel that they use um, for the aircrafts. Now, they said that they've encountered situation today and the aviation fuel is scarce and therefore not available for most of their <laughs> flight destinations. They're doing everything they can, but they wanted the passengers and um, customers to be aware that this all, in fact, almost all the destinations, they couldn't find fuel to, to lift wow. the aircraft. So this issue, and, and this, you can also connect this to the fact that the Russian, uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, because then they said that before the invasion, the, the, um, fuel was, Brent was about $90, mm -hmm. $90 to per liter. But now it's $133 wow. to the liter. It has totally increased. And, that, and people are shutting the economies in Russia. So obviously, the, there's a huge demand for fuel. And now the price has gone up. It's supposed to be good news for us, meaning that we have we more food to buy. Yeah. But it means that we're also going to be paying more subsidies. So yeah. this thing is a very... In fact, I need an expert to come and tell us. Explain do we? Us. How do we benefit from this, this, this new window of opportunity that we have? But... Is it, is it going to be beneficial in any way? I mean, do we do anything from the uh, are we the only, are we the only country? <laughs> are we the only country that is that is <laughs> affiliated to this economy? Good, uh, how come you are the ones that are suffering? How do you know you're the only one? How many countries are watching the news? No, 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 no
the evacuation mm. story. You know, we just heard the planes mm. came in, about a thousand or so mm. kids. And they then, brought another batch. I think they brought another batch. I saw on yes. social media, I'm okay. not sure. But they brought another batch. We need to follow up and know exactly how many kids are back home. Mm. You know, it's important to, to be clear because we don't keep silence on this So matter. they're appealing to those neighboring countries to allow, allow Nigerians them. get yeah. in there so that they mm -hmm. can come back home. Well, I think so, we assume is that it's closer to Russia than, yes, than Ukraine. Yeah. Okay. So good news, a bit of, well, we think only good news because Nigeria ranks 30 in global BS study. So there's a study <laughs> done, at least well, it were above average or something. Is that a good thing? Is it beer consumption or beer sales? The, the production, economy, the production and the economy generally. Okay. Yeah, studying about 70 countries that are, um, this was done by the World Beauty Alliance. Yeah. The, the, the beauty industry is a massive industry, provides employment, um, and of course, the in the ranking, Nigeria is number 30. They mentioned how the fact that about 23 million jobs are provided worldwide <coughs> through this beauty industry. So it's a good, it's a, it's not, it's, Religious wise, it's not it's not good, but in terms of economy, it is providing jobs for people. And they're saying that this this is despite the re, um, pa pandemic and that they are, the the beauty industry is recovering. They're even going towards e-commerce for beauty industry as opposed to the way it's been done conventionally before. That there's a huge opportunity for to come into the industry and make money within that industry. Mm. Okay, the Nigerian Tribune. Let's find a story. We've not taken sixty-two killed by bandits in Kebi. Reps to reconsider three rejected bills. We talked about that already. Asu strikes. Students block Lagos about an expressway. FG releases 10 billionaire for presidential wing clinic. Adelike <coughs> wins Ocean PDP governorship primary. Picture here of uh, Honorable Minister of Works and Housing. Mr. Babatunde Fashola. I think there's an inspection in the Niger, Niger uh, Bridge in Delta State. And let's see, commuters grown as BRT buses suspend operations over Bamish's death. I know they were suspended. I'm not sure if it's been, it's been they've resumed as the BRT buses because I know my driver complained that he couldn't get, it was difficult for him to get to work. Mm. So I don't know what the, the update is about. Suspended. Suspended, so I mean, right? I yeah. I didn't hear anything yeah. about resumption. So in Kebi State, uh, they said no fewer than 40 members of a vigilante group have been killed or mm. feared to be killed by bandits. Um, this was in the Sakaba local government area of KB. It happens on Monday night. They said this group of vigilante were on their <coughs> way to an operation in Dunkolo village, and then they ran into a bandit's ambush. And it, um, from eyewitness reports, they say it seemed that the bandits had uh, foreknowledge of their movement and then um, ambushed them, and um, they, they, most of them were killed. They said, although on the bandit side also they had casualties, but they noticed that when they went back, most of the bandits had carried their own uh, members. Um, they said that this um, attack may have happened because two weeks before there had been a, an operation and it affected, you know, the bandits. And so that, that may be the reason why they have come to why they came and they um, did this. The president is aware of this. He, was, he said he's really sad about it. He said the, uh, President Mohammed Buhari expresses sadness over the killing of Kebi vigilantes and demands for more proactive efforts right. going forward. Yeah, um, another story in uh, the Tribune. Students under the umbrella of the National Association of Nigerian Students on Tuesday, that was yesterday, protested and blocked the Ogun end of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway over mm -hmm. the lingering strike uh, mm -hmm. on ASU. And they were calling on the president to resign from office, saying that he has failed them. Uh, they were gathered there. Till, uh, they started at about um, 8 a.m. in the morning, and it took some uh, public officials to come and you know take beg them right. and take them away. Yeah. So one of the things they lamented is instead of uh, ASU to, instead of the federal government to listen to ASU and go with the agreements they've already had since 2009, they are setting up another committee to start renegotiation and that is not right. the way to go. That at the end of this day, uh, of, of the strike and everything, they are the ones that are losing, they are losing out by the time they graduate from school after oh, spending oh. so many years, they are not able to get jobs in the labor market and it's really affecting them. So right. the government needs to do the needful, equip these lecturers so that they can go back to school. Okay, mm. congratulations to Senator Adeleke. He was declared the winner mm. of the PDP primaries. Uh, out of 1,916 delegates, he got 1,887. Wow. Not only him, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, congratulations that's to you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all we can take on front page review. When we come back, we have a sponsored segment for MasterCard. Stay with us, we'll be right back.
Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. <laughs>